Hello, I'm Jerry Russell, and I think it's safe to say my greatest claim to fame is to be Wendy Davis's dad. You might be interested in knowing that as a little girl, she was always the caregiver, the arbiter, the teacher, and always very intelligent and extremely fair-minded. And I think you'd agree those are the qualities that have made her such a great leader over these past years. It wasn't easy though, Dad. We all loved each other, but when you and Mom split up, it was hard for us all. Mom, born to tenant farmers, only a ninth grade education, she struggled like so many for every meal she put on the table. And you, you never gave up on your dream. Scraping by, starting your own live theater, I get my grip from you. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'm a grandmother, I marvel at how different my childhood was from Ellis and Sawyer's. The opportunities they have because of the sacrifices of generations before them. Like Grandma and Granddad. I remember spending summers with Grandma and Muleshoe tending her garden all day. We'd sit on the back porch and drink fresh brewed sweet tea and reflect on our day's work. That was after Granddad had a stroke, robbing him of his ability to speak. He never learned to read or write, but I tried to be his voice. My nine-year-old legs stuck to the vinyl kitchen chair, working so hard to understand and write what he was trying to say. Wendy also has been a devoted and loving mother to her daughters, Amber and Drew, and has been deeply involved in every aspect of their lives. It's amazing where that began. I was so scared when I found out I was expecting such a young mom. She was about 18, 19. 19. But one day, I opened a pamphlet and it opened a door to my dreams. Community college, then to TCU with help from family and a scholarship, and then the unimaginable, accepted to Harvard Law. Remember, Dad, how we both cried when I graduated? I was in awe. All of those things brought me here. But is life really about our circumstances and what we make of them? Or is it about those that we touch along the way and the courage we gain from each other? So I'm rising on the floor today to humbly give voice to thousands of Texans who have been ignored. I've learned that I'm at my best when I'm fighting for people. And even in losing, we help shape the future because it isn't personal achievements or failures that create change. It's working together to fight for what matters. Every Texan needs to know that the future belongs to all of us and we all can play a role in shaping it. I founded a nonprofit, Deeds Not Words, centered around the idea that while our words spoken among and to each other were important, it is our action that is really needed. I hope you can see it all, Dad. And I just wanted to tell you, we are not stopping anytime soon. We've seen an assault on voting rights. We've seen an assault on reproductive rights. We've seen an assault on immigrant protections and rights. We're talking about politicians who are making decisions that they know are going to put people's health in jeopardy, and they do it anyway. It shouldn't be unusual for a public official to stand and fight for the men and women who elected them. It should be a job requirement. I'm running for Congress because people's voices are still being silenced. I'm running for our children and grandchildren so they can live and love and fight for change themselves. And Dad, we're going to win. So what do you think? Wendy, you, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs>